Good evening, good evening, and welcome to the Walter Reed Theater and to the screening, which is part of our ongoing series of screenings for our friends, our donors and patrons. I'm Richard Pena, the program director of the Film Society, and on behalf of the whole staff, I'd like to welcome you. Uh, it's just the beginning of 2012, and yet we're you're feeling that we're off to a real banner year. Uh, two of our tentpole series, the New York Jewish Film Festival and Dance on Camera, were bigger than ever, better attended, and uh, I think even greater successes. So we're very proud of that. And our ongoing series of uh, celebrating the 50th anniversary of the New York Film Festival, in which we show a film from the festival each week, uh, has also been going great guns. Last night we had a terrific evening here with Jonathan Demme and Paul Lamatt, who spoke about their film Citizens Band, which was premiered in the festival back in 1977. And we've got uh, coming up Earl, Mar Earl Morris coming with Gates of Heaven and a beautiful 35 millimeter print on February 18th of The Black Stallion. So these are things you won't want to miss. And this series, of course, will go on all year until we actually reach the 50th New York Film Festival this September. We also, of course, have coming up our annual gala in April, and as you know, the subject is Catherine Deneuve, and we're enormously proud that Madame Deneuve has accepted our invitation to be the Chaplin Award recipient this year on April 2nd. Uh, invitations to the gala will be reaching you in the next couple of weeks, and we hope that you'll join us for this special event celebrating Madame de Nerve and her cinematic career, which is bold, thoughtful, and deeply engaging, just like our audiences. <laughs> Tonight we're going to be screening a wonderful film called Undefeated, directed by Dan Lindsay and T.J. Martin, who I'll introduce to you in just a moment. Nominated for an Academy Award, Undefeated is a coming-of-age documentary set in uh, inner-city Memphis. It chronicles the Manassas Tigers' 2009 football season on and off the field as they strive to win the first playoff game in the high school's 110-year history. And we'd like to thank our friends at the Weinstein Company for making the screening possible for us and for always being great friends of the Film Society. And we'd also like to thank you, our board and patrons, uh, plus our members and corporate sponsors for your continuous and generous support. So now it's my great pleasure to introduce to you the co-filmmakers of Undefeated. Please welcome T.J. Martin and Dan Lindsay. Hi, thank you very much for coming out. Um, it's very funny to hear like Errol Morris and the Black Stallion and then like, oh, Dan Lindsay and TJ Martin. That makes sense. Um, uh, and we also thank you for coming out because we, TJ and I always joke if we were like at a film festival and we opened the program and we saw our film on there, it's like, oh, high school football film. I'll let somebody else see that and tell me if it's any good. Um, so <laughs> uh, we really appreciate it. Um, and uh, it, to that point, um, and in, in a way of introducing the film, we'll try and, and not say too much and let this film just kind of speak for itself. But um, for us, uh, when we found the story, we found the story through one of the characters that you'll see in the film, but um, we did not set out to make a football film or a sports film. It was actually something we resisted. Um, but there was, we went on a trip to Memphis to look at doing this film, and there was something about the fact that there was this there was something about North Memphis that we just felt like we had to tell this story. And we didn't know what the story was going to be, but we knew we had to do it. And um, and so we uh, filmed some footage and were able to convince some people to give us some money to go and, and do it. And we knew the only way to make this film um, correctly was, was to be there for everything. So we moved to Memphis for nine months to make this film and we filmed over 500 hours of footage. Um, because it was our intention to make something that would be intimate and um, and observational and something that where things would unfold in front of the camera. We didn't want to make a documentary that was anecdotal or where people would be talking about things that had happened in the past. Uh, it was very important to us to make a cinema-going experience. Um, and so uh, from that five hours of 500 hours of footage, this is what we kind of whittled down. And I know TJ wants to say... O ostensibly, I think from from the outside, the film, uh, you know, it's uh, by genre. Maybe it's a it's a sports doc, but I think to us, it's much more than that. It's a film about uh, commitment. It's a film about resilience. It's a film about opportunity or lack thereof. Um, and, and and like Dan said, we went. We we were much more interested in telling <coughs> stories, and in the, specifically in the documentary space, where where it's uh, where 
life unfolds in front of the camera and it's less anecdotal. So uh, we got really lucky in this sense where we captured some really beautiful moments. And so the film that you're about to watch really is a testament to the community and, and their trust in us and, and opening up their doors um, and letting us kind of and trusting us in telling their story. Um, lastly, before we actually step off the stage and let you enjoy the film, we have to do a shameless plug. The film comes out February 17th in uh, New York and in LA, and then March 2nd, it opens up to a wider release of the rest of the nation. Um, and, and for us, it's, it's, it's pretty amazing that a documentary is getting, we really are in, indebted to not just the community in North Memphis, but also to the Weinstein Company, because they're releasing the film as if it were a narrative. And, and, and for us, that means a lot, not just for our film, but also for, for documentaries as a whole. I think it's an opportunity to see that, you know, documentaries also, um, uh, have the ability to kind of garner the same amount of attention that a, a scripted film would. So um, mark it on your calendars, February 17th. If you like it. If you we're like not gonna, it. We're not no pressure. Yeah. Tell you don't your like friends. It, don't tell anyone. It's yeah. terrible. You don't need to talk about it. If again. you don't like it, that's cool. You can still tell your friends to go see it. I'm cool <laughs> with that. Um, and also, if you don't like it, go see it again. And if yeah. you like it, go see it three times. That's, I'm also cool with that. Um, but again, we don't want to take up too much of your time. So uh, without uh, any other... Further ado, yeah. you good? Thank you very much. Enjoy the coming. film. Please welcome the filmmakers, T.J. Martin and Dan Lindsay. <laughs> Wherever you like. <laughs> right there. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> Hi. Let me start off with a couple of questions. First, can you talk about how you found this story, this school, and how did you get such extraordinary access to these lives? Uh, our, our producer, Rich Middlemiss, who had been a friend of mine in Los Angeles for like 10 years, and we both moved to LA at the same time. He had worked in the studio world for a long time, and he found the article that was mentioned in the film about OC living with this coach, and he sent it to TJ and I, and he's like, you know, I don't know anything about documentaries, but I think this could be interesting. And we read it and we're like, yeah, you know, it uh, feels interesting, you know, enough that we'll, we'll, let's look into this. And so we tracked OC down and, and somebody gave us a number of somebody who was like, oh, his coach is this guy, Bill Courtney. Give him a call. So we called Bill and literally from the first phone conversation we had with him, we we're like, he's interesting. Uh, and so it was enough for us to go to Memphis and and look at the idea, and, and then we met Bill in person, and we met OC, and then on that first trip we met Money, um, and that was when we decided to kind of shift focus and, and make it more about the actual team. You know, it gave us a nice, a nice beginning, middle, and end. It was a season, but more than anything, it was, it was anecdotes that Bill had told us about years previous. And for us, uh, TJ and I are really interested in making documentaries that are experiential, you know, where things are going to happen, there, things are going to unfold in front of the camera. And, um, and so this just felt like that kind of opportunity, but the only way we were going to be able to do that was to move there. So we moved to Memphis for nine months uh, and kind of embedded ourselves with this team and filmed 500 hours of footage and um, whittled it down to what you watched tonight. Did you work with the subjects at all during the course of the film, showing them bits of it or talking about your ideas? No, not not at all. <laughs> actually, I mean the, <clears throat> you know, part of the reason we actually shot 500 hours was because, in order to get that kind of emotional intimacy and that kind of emotional candor in front of the camera, um, we really kind of we showed up. Here are these guys from LA who show up and say, "Hey, we want to tell your story." And so, in order to get their, we had to earn their trust in order to to to, to tell their story res responsibly. Um, so, a big part of that was to not ever kind of give them an idea of our process. So like, like Dan has often said, like we never, like it often, oftentimes in documentaries, if you miss uh, an opportunity to get your character walking through a door or walking down the street, you ask them, oh, can you please walk that door again? Because in your head, you're editing in your head thinking, you know, this will be a great setup for this scene. Um, we just, we never did that. If we miss something with the character, it was, that's it, it's done. There's no opportunity to get it again. So we, we found ourselves showing up to practices every day, showing up to school almost every day, shooting talent shows, knowing that it'll 
never make the final edit of the film, but A, it was one to be present for everything, um, and B, it was to also earn the trust of the community that we were profiling. Well, I mean, we're also working with adolescents who, like, you know, are very aware of media. You know, we live in a, a, a time where reality media television is huge, yeah. and, like, everyone really kind of understands what that is. And we wanted them to, we really wanted them to look, as, look at us as just another part of the, f the team process. Like, so these are these guys who just show up at practice every day, and, like, that's what it is, and we don't have to think anything differently. And so that we also made the conscious choice to not have a sound uh, person, a sound mixer, so we had no boom mic or anything like that, and it was, it was really important to us for them to forget what we were doing. You're looking at the entire crew right here. <laughs> In that 500 hours, are there some sequences that when you see the film again, you go, I wish we had been able to put that one in? There's, I, there's a lot of moments and even storylines that, that we, we had to divorce ourselves from. But I, I think, again, at the end of the day, I think like any, any, with any project, at the end of the day, you want the uh, sum to be bigger than the parts. And so for us, we, generally speaking, when we approach a project, we work from themes. And if anything doesn't speak to that theme, um, and in this case, you know, fatherhood, resilience, if any scene doesn't speak to that, it's just gone and we can't second guess it. And we've been really uh, lucky enough that it's, you know, again, the sum speaks louder than the parts. And so I think, you know, f for example, we didn't make, we, we didn't set out to make a social issues based film. But by the by nature of making an intimate um, coming of age film where we didn't shy away from showing, you know, kind of dis the disparities of the community, kind of the, the, the racial dynamics, the class dynamics. I think it's an opportunity to, that, that maybe inspires or elicits greater conversation after the fact. It was also, I think, uh, just very briefly, like it was very important to edit in a way that kept the story moving because we wanted to be patient with our scenes. So like we, you know, there's times where like there's a shot that goes on for like, I don't know if you notice or not, but it's like two or three minutes. Like Chavis dedicating his award to money is all one shot and it goes on for a very long time. But like the only way we felt like an audience can sit through that kind of stuff is to keep it moving. And to do that, we had to be speaking to our themes and speaking to the story. So like even if there was this amazing moment that we have, and there's a lot of them, like we've got incredible stuff that's not in the movie, but it didn't speak to the theme and it didn't speak to the story, so it had to go. During the nine months of making the film, what was the biggest surprise for you in terms of the development of this story and these characters? Well, I mean, there's surprises in like when, what I was just talking about, when Chavis dedicates his money, uh, his award to money. Me that was and, insane. Me and TJ were looking at each other like, we have a movie. Like, this is like, <laughs> this isn't a documentary anymore. <laughs> um, you know, so there's like, and, and the money, finding out about college. I mean, I, I was filming that like, weeping like I was crying like hold the camera straight hold the camera straight like because these kids meant uh, kids they, these pl guys these players meant so much to us we got so invested in their lives that like it wasn't I it, it, you know there's times there's actually times where if you watch the raw footage at the games we like we screw up shooting like a touchdown or something because they they're about to score and one of us is like yes yes and the camera like goes down we're like oh wait we we're making a movie we need to keep filming this um so I think the moment, I mean, there's just moments there's that were moments, surprising yeah. to us. No, I, I, I couldn't agree more. I'm still, like, there are moments where I'll, I'll sit and just watch the film with an audience. And it, it's a combination of things. One, to see that those moments actually happened in front of a camera and, and that they actually, they work for an audience. When we start to hear people laughing at the right spots or, or uh, you know, you said it many times a year ago, we were sitting in our edit bay just like, no one's gonna watch this. We were hoping that one other person, aside from ourselves, would be like, "Oh, you guys made something pretty cool there. That was nice." You spent nine months to show our parents the film, yeah. um, but you know the fact that the film, and that's been the most rewarding thing, is the fact to see people uh, react emotionally to to the work is it never gets old, and that's that's a surprise every yeah, time. I, I can't see that final scene, you know, without. You know. Neither can I. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We used to always say when we were editing, we'd watch it with TJ and I and our producer Rich, and we'd like pl you know do playback, and Rich would always go, oh, "Got a little dusty in the room, like you know, like, oh, oh, my eyes are getting a little water." <laughs> Avoid looking at <laughs> yeah, each other. No, I'm good. Yeah, I'm no, good. that's fine. It's fine. It's good. <laughs> Let's get some questions from all of you. Yes, ma'am. What was the reaction to the film when you showed it to the subjects and to the whole community? We, it was kind of a different for everybody. So Bill, we, we had a handshake 
deal with Bill when we first met him that we would show him a rough cut of the film and he was allowed to tell us if there was anything in there that made him uncomfortable. We didn't we never said we would take it out, but if it was something that was like being provocative for provocative sake, we were like, okay, then we'll you know, but we would argue you know, we would we would make our point for our thing. So anyways, I went to Memphis and showed him the film and he got seated kind of behind me the way it like kind of worked out and I was like oh this is not good I want to be able to see his reaction so the movie's going down the whole time and like it finally ends and I turn over and look at him he's just like a mess of tears and uh, he's like that he's like you don't understand like he's like that's the most important year of my life and I just wa I relived it again and he's like you got it right and that was the most important thing to us is that he said you got it right and he's like now play it again because I missed the first 45 minutes because I kept thinking about how fat I was uh, and so we watched it again. And then Money and Chavis came to the premiere at South by Southwest, and because we were cutting it like you know all the way up into the last second, we we had to we got on the phone with him what was it, like two or three days before and talked through the entire film with him. We're like, then you do this, then this happens, then that happens. Sometimes people think you're bad because of that. Sometimes people think, you know, we're like trying to give them any reaction. And then we met him at the hotel. They flew in, and we showed him the film. Well, we showed Money. First, the film on the computer, he watched it. The only thing he, he was like, it's good, you got it right. He's like, but that scene with me and the doctor, he's like, everybody's gonna think I'm stupid. He was mad about like, you know, when he says, is that my brain? Like that was the only, uh, anyone who was like, that was the only complaint. He's like, can you take that out? It makes me look stupid. I was like, it's endearing money. It's like a good moment. Um, and Chavis, long, long two Chavis story. Yeah, best. way too long of a story to tell here, but, and excuse my language uh, beforehand, but, um, he, uh, he missed his flight and all this. And he gets into Austin, and we have like an hour before the premiere, and we're like, we have to at least show you what you look like in this film. Like, So we're like, I'm holding my computer while he's putting on his shirt. He's like changing in the hotel room. And I'm like fast forwarding the scenes. And I think we got maybe through two scenes. I think we got through the fight with him and Money. And he goes, these are his words, so I apologize for my language. He goes, yeah, fuck it, I said it. And that was it. He didn't want to watch anymore. <laughs> and I was like, uh, okay. So we went to the uh, we went to the premiere, and uh, and he watched it, and he turned to us afterwards, and he said, "You got it right." Yeah. And, he did, and, and he we did a Q and A afterwards, and he gave it a pretty amazing, endearing speech to because Bill was present there as well, and he basically said, "I don't know where I'd be without the presence of Bill Courtney," and it kind of, again, we all kind of like started tearing up, and it got dusty in the room again, <laughs> but yeah. But it, it actually, to, to, to answer your question, also the, you know, because we went and screened it at Indie Memphis Film Festival mm -hmm. in Memphis, so for the greater um, community that kind of you know really participated in helping out in in, in, in the process of the, of the film, um, and that was I think for us it's fair to say that was the most nerve wracking screening of them all, um, and that you know the entire audience was former players, current players, people that worked at the school, people that worked in North Memphis, and we did. A, Q and A after packed house, and we did a Q and A afterwards. We got up there, and you know, so and the moderator was like, "So, you guys have any questions?" And it was just like tumbleweeds, like just like dead silence. You're like, "Oh God, they hate the <laughs> film." Um, and then we kind of like all shuttled out into the mezzanine area, and it was supposed to be like a kind of like a 15, 20 minute reception. No one left for three hours. They were just so elated and kind of like on cloud nine because. You know, for nine months, these guys from L.A. were running around with these small little cameras. I think most people just thought it was like a little video, college video project or something like that. And I think they didn't expect it to kind of play in such a kind of a cinematic fashion. And, and more than that, you know, I in that community specifically, more times than none, if there's going to be a media presence, it's there to do like a sensationalized piece about the violence in the community. And like that wasn't – we. We were there to tell their, their stories responsibly and tell a coming-of-age film that allowed you to kind of celebrate the things that happened in that community. And I think they were really grateful to have, you know, a group of guys to come in and, and tell their, their, their story, again, re responsibly. And, 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 and again, it, it's a really it's a testament to their trust in us and opening up their doors um, to tell their story. Yes, gentlemen, right here. Thank you very much. How many of the other kids on the team? From the team? I would say, well, on signing day, there was about five. Uh, there was, I think there was a five or six other players that got scholarships yeah. for, you know, like kind of smaller division three schools or something like that. 
I would say maybe, I don't know, 10 or 15 it's went to actual to universities. Back. Maybe like another 10 went to like community college. It's probably about half and half. Um, but that's, that. I mean, the crazy part, it's hard to, to really talk about that and even to, to, to guesstimate because, you know, our intention was to go in and really capture a moment in time. And we, you know, even just, we keep in touch with a lot of kids on Facebook and, and just to see how many of the kids maybe got the opportunity to go to college and have, have dropped out since. You know, our intention was to capture this one moment in time where you have the, where s there are so many possibilities in your life. And so I even if some of, let's say, 50% of the kids went to college, you know, 25 of that 50% have now not been able to necessarily adjust to college life because they've, they've become so acclimated to learning how to operate within the world, the very specific world of how to survive in North Memphis. Um, that it, that doesn't necessarily translate to operating in, you know, maybe what we deem as the real world, the working world, or even the college world. So it's it's hard to kind of, you know, come up, even if you came up with a number, it's hard to say who is actually still in college. You know what I mean? Yeah. Time for maybe one more. Yes. <laughs> what would have happened if, in fact, their record was It would have been years? called defeated, and we would all be sitting here <laughs> depressed, and, uh, no. Um, we wouldn't be you know, sitting here. You know, for us, it didn't, it, that never mattered. I mean, I always point to the example of, like, we were halfway through the film, filming process when we were, like, somebody was like, are you filming the quarterback? And we're like, oh, uh, that's probably a good idea. He's the guy that scores all the touchdowns. Uh, maybe people would be interested in him. You know, for us, it was... It was always a, a film about uh, about the about character and kind of the human spirit and stuff. So that that stuff wasn't as important to us. So even if they had lost every game, you know, a, a, a documentaries are very much are a, a living, breathing thing as you're making them, and they they kind of tell you the story tells you what it's going to be. I mean, in fact, we were very we didn't want to make a sports film, and even the the subject matter. We always joke like if we were at a festival and we like read the program, it's like a high school football team overcomes the odds. We're like not going to see that, um, you know, like. It, we were like not wanting to make this story, but it just kept telling us that that's what it was, and and we couldn't deny the moments that we were capturing, and you know, because for us it was going to be more about education, I guess, the first few weeks we were there, and then it, it very much became a story about about football and about, but more, you know, about resilience and, and character and fatherhood, and um, and so I don't, I, it would have been a totally different movie. But it, I, I hope it still would have been yeah. an interesting film. I mean, I think with that said, though, I, I, our approach was at, at net, we our intention was always to make a, 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 a verite film and a kind of a coming of age film. So, like Dan said early on, like we're we're much more interested in, in films where it's not anecdotal. It's not people telling you about instances that happen. It's not a talking head piece. So you know, we got we got really we made 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 sure that we were present for these moments, and we got really lucky that we we had kind of such a big emotional swells in the film. Yeah, we did our, like, there was a documentary filmmaker um, who we talked to who was very well known, and he was like, he's like, you guys caught lightning in a bottle, like, and that will only happen once or twice in your life, and like, be happy for it. But he's like, but you also put yourself in a position to catch that lightning and be thankful for that as well. And and I think for us, that was, that was what was the most important, was like, put ourselves in a position to be actually actually be able to capture these moments that I think sometimes get, you know, y y that just, it just doesn't happen. Okay, I'm afraid that's all we have time for because we have to set up for the next show. I want to thank TJ and Dan very much for the film. Thank you very much. And thank you, thank you all for coming.